is it tough? Like, does it take a toll on you mentally and, and the jobs that you take? You know, how does it affect you and your, your personal lives? Oh, this is actually a great one to start on because uh, Crystal and I can both have really different perspectives on this one. Why don't you go first, mm-hmm. Crystal? Um, I'll say honestly, yes, it can take a toll. Um, because sometimes we end up having to work for long periods of time. Um, for example, I have a significant other and sometimes I end up being very busy with between the paperwork and trying to find information for people and uh, I don't get to see her as often. Um, I, of course, try to make up for it when I get a break and try to do what I can to make her happy and hang out with her. But it, it can take a toll, honestly. We we end up all putting in a lot of time and effort into every case we take. So, mm. yeah, and uh, and, and bounce that around to, to me. Uh, a few of us here, uh, a lot of the founding members of the of the firm, um, we have background in police work. I was a, a homicide police officer in Liberty City for going on twenty five years. Uh, when I retired and I, uh, I met up with uh, some other former officers, uh, Lenore Lockhart, Tommy D'Angelo, the founders of the firm, and uh, we started working here uh, in uh, San Andreas. Mm-hmm. And he, having worked so long as a police officer, you, you kind of get desensitized to a lot of crazy things, but... I mean, that's the East Coast, you know? <laughs> this, is, this is the West Coast. It's a whole different brand of crazy out here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oof, <laughs> yeah that's just, I, I, uh, I plead the fifth on that one. All right, I, I don't want to talk about the nights. All right, but, uh, the, the, the toll's still there for sure. You know, it's you got to make sure that in between cases or going out on stakeouts and doing all this, you know, long slogging work that Crystal talks about. That uh, you know, it, it's it's you got to maintain a strong work life balance. You know, you got to mm-hmm. make friends outside the firm. You got to go out and, you know, get to know people that you can talk with that isn't about, you know, like, oh, hey, this case is crazy, right? You know, stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. you got to have people to talk to. Got to maintain that balance. It, it could be hard to do so because it, it's very absorbing work. Yeah. I, I I try not to talk to my friends about this stuff unless I absolutely have to. Because they, yeah. they're, they're a good break. <laughs> being able to see them. Mm. Uh, Crystal, you specifically mentioned that uh, a lot of hours I put into the the job Mm -hmm. and it can be tough. But are those happy hours or sometimes you feel like they're they're forced upon you? Or do you you both enjoy doing your job? I genuinely enjoy this work. Like, I have a... it's, It's honestly very rewarding for me. But that that might just be me. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, it's, um, you know, I, I have such a long history of this kind of work uh, in an official capacity, you know, like as a, as a state officer back in Liberty. It's, um, you know, it, it was a good way to <laughs> make sure all my time on the force was validated in the uh, civilian sector as well. Uh, there's times where it's like, oh god, this case, you know, it's uh, this one, you know, clearly this guy's off his rocker and he, he just wants somebody to try and confirm that he's not actually crazy or something like that, you know, like there's always going to be crank cases. Yeah. This is this is this, there's Looney Tunes everywhere in the city, and um, mm-hmm. it, we we try to encourage people who come to us with those cases, you know, we, we, we don't want to take advantage of them and just be like, hey, wait, you want us to pretend that there's UFOs over Fort Zancudo? Yeah, it's fine. We'll go f- deep fake a photograph and give it to you. Give us 50 grand, things like that. No, we don't do that. We, 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 we keep it upright. We make sure that we are, um, that we're, we're helping people. You know, that's what we want to do. We want to help these people that have the issues, that want to see it done, and want to have the whole story for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned helping, which is something that I've come across. I've done quite a few interviews in the past few weeks. And I was talking to a, a therapist who said the main reason he became a therapist was to help. And the fact that he's doing that now, he feels fantastic. You've both given your kind of uh, your kind of background on how you got to this job. But was being able to help people a motivation in getting this job? Or was it just something you kind of just discovered halfway through? 
final thought on this one, Crystal. Okay. Um, I would say that discovering that helping people was um, it, it, it was at first when I first started this work. It was secondary. Uh, I started getting into this work after I went through a really nasty divorce with my uh, ex-wife. Uh, I still pay fifty percent of my uh, my income to her all the way back across the country. You know, I got two kids. They aren't quite 18 yet, so I got to support them where I can. You know, I, I'm not happy about losing half my cash, but uh, she was always a decent mother. She wasn't a great wife. So I, I know the money's going to the right place. So it, I, I got into this for the money, I'll be honest. At first, I did. But then knowing that people could get closure on things that have been bothering them, that's what I do it for now. Because sometimes the most frustrating thing is having a question that you could never answer, right? And that's why that's why I want to get high and I want to help these people because it, knowing what the answer is to a question you have, even if it's not one that you're happy to hear, that's that's what it's all about for me. Mm. Uh, as for me, um, I literally <clears throat> applied for the job because I wanted to help people. <laughs> Uh, personally, I have, I wasn't a cop. I was never a police officer. I was actually a lawyer at one point, And then I moved here to Los Santos. And once I moved here, I decided to hang out with some of my friends who were in a bad crowd and I became a criminal. Um, so my criminal record is too extensive to be a cop. I also don't think I could be a cop because I don't want to hurt people and they often end up in shootouts. Um, so personally, this this job, I, I went for it because I wanted to help people and I wanted to pretty much get a new start for myself. That That's why I did it. Hmm. Yeah, Crystal, Crystal was one of our... Uh... I think you are a second or third hire here in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, you know, she, she's risen up to be one of our leading investigators here now. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a real uh, coming of age story, as it were, you know, in, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, private investigation. Yeah. yeah, the police are even impressed with how I still haven't gotten arrested since, I, I don't know, it's been a few months now, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and, and that, that also pivots, if I could comment on something else you know it's um you know while while, while our methods are, are generally clean you know it's, it's a pretty squeaky clean operation we run here we aren't <clears> so <throat> quick to judge people on their past as long as they're looking over to turn a legitimate new leaf you know it's we don't want people that are like hey uh, i just got out of the pen for uh, you know 25 years uh, you know murdering two cops in cold blood you want to mm -hmm. hire me? I can I can find stuff for you. You know, we we aren't looking for that kind of thing. You know, we we look for we look for talent. And we look for um, moral character. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um. Now, personally, I've uh, I've recently encountered uh, the crime wave that uh, I thought has come over the state of San Andreas, and I kind of wanted to know has how's business been basically in, in in basic words how's business been has it been good has it been bad has it been the norm and, and if the norm is what it has been you know what is the norm uh, to comment on the crime wave i i i see it happening you know i i can drive down the street on any given day and i i think i could probably see a, a bank get pushed over or something mm -hmm. like that and it's um yeah, like I said, you know, the West Coast is its own brand of crazy. It's 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 not a bad thing necessarily, you know, just a different blend of coffee. And uh, got um, well, the business. I don't want to say our business has profited off of the crime wave. Um, I mean, of course, you know, from all this crime, people are going to have questions when things happen to them, and that has been a. Uh, an advantageous aspect for our business, but we're not looking to take advantage of people's misfortune by any means. You know, we we put out our advertisements and then people come to us. We aren't going like, hey, do you think your husband's, uh, you know, got a side chick or something like that? Hey, why don't you come talk to us? You know, hey, for, for a cool couple G's, we can go and find out for you. You know, we're not soliciting people for that kind of thing. We're, we're providing a service for them. 
and they're coming to us and taking care of it. The the crime wave has been good for volume of work, but that that's really all I could comment on. You know, I, I I'm not encouraging crime to continue to give me work. Hmm. You mentioned um, the. Sorry, go ahead. From some of my friends that I still have from they they are criminals. <laughs> They're still criminals, um, but they've actually been calming down with their criminal lifestyle, and they're considering changing jobs themselves now, too. Um, so at certain times of the day, the crime wave is actually depleting, and it's actually <clears throat> sometimes those people who have been hiring us. So yeah. it's even people who who aren't in the criminal lifestyle anymore who are coming to us for help. Hmm. And you mentioned a, a few scenarios there, and uh, I was just kind of wondering, what are the kind of usual cases that you get at this firm? Do you get the cases about, oh no, my cat stuck up a tree, you know, come find out who put it up there? Or do you get cases that are, are more on a serious level of the scale? We've gotten everything from, is my significant other cheating? Can you dress up in a costume to that my friend got attacked? Can you help me find out? Who did it? I like I would say the most benign case we've had is locating the jeweler mm -hmm. uh, for somebody, and that and that was it. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's anything big or small. Like, there's no problem too small or too big. And obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're fair people. We're business people. Depending mm -hmm. on the the context of the case, you know, we'll, we'll scale our prices accordingly to that. You know, like finding that jeweler that easy you know it's it's somebody that needs help they need something taken care of and they can't handle it themselves so they give it to us to take care of for them mm -hmm. but that's something so small you know it's almost like insignificant price lies and things like that mm. um you you sure had a, a few words there and one thing that's kind of stuck out to me that i mentioned before was the word help so i thought of a little bit of a scenario here and i was kind of just wondering to the answer to it and um, say if okay. someone does come to you with a problem, maybe their uh, son or daughter or brother or sister has been attacked. Um, mm -hmm. They're very short in cash. They don't even have a house. They don't have a car. They don't have anything. But they come to you for help. And they can offer very, very little. What would be the, the go-to right there? Would you still find some way to make them repay? Or would you do the service and still help them? Uh, that's that's that is a very hard question to answer. I don't know if you mm -hmm. want to answer one, Crystal, because I I could answer that one if you if you don't want to. Um. So we at Lockhart are allowed to take personal cases. Um. So personally, I would still try to help them to the best of my ability. Um. Even if they can't hire the entire firm to help out, I would still, even if I have to do it pro bono, I would find information that I could for them, personally. Mm. Um, with that said, it is a business, though, and the owners of the company do normally ask us to charge something. Um, if we're If they're hiring the company as a whole. So I would probably try to work out a deal with him. Um to make it as cheap as possible <laughs> yeah well, yeah we do we do sort of a sort of a yeah, kind of a payment plan where we do mm -hmm. an upfront cost then we do a closing cost yeah and those are always negotiable when it comes to that you know it's um mm -hmm. if somebody doesn't have a lot of cash that they can scrape up up front if they can just get even a small down payment that will uh, initiate the work on it you know something like that for example we had a case um, without sharing too much information, uh, this man's granddaughter had been attacked. And he wanted to know who did it and what had happened. Um, <clears throat> normally, that's a dangerous case because this person is actively trying to cause her bodily harm. Um, but he was broke. He, he did not have very much money to his name at all. And we went as cheap as humanly possible for him. So we as a company as a whole could work for him. I think we charged him 1K. And then like 3K when we were done. Because it took like... We, we gave him time to be able to pay us off too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's that sort of thing. 
yeah and there's there's you know there's asset management behind that too you know like mm-hmm. how much of our time and effort are we going to be throwing into this as a force all at once you know like as a, as the firm you know all, all of us gathering together going out and handling this one case it, not to say that you can buy the uh, like the the brevity of your case you know like we don't mm-hmm. ignore cheaper cases mm-hmm. in, in in that way but um, yeah it, you, when we ask for higher prices it's always because there's more there's more time there's more investment there, mm-hmm. there's technology involved in uh, purchasing and use in some cases uh they i mean you know, for, first of all thank god we got universal healthcare here but you know yeah. like, uh, expenses on top of that you know anything that could come from this you know if one of us gets injured in a a, a a dangerous case and mm-hmm. we have long-term medical charges you know that we need to have an overhead large enough that that could be covered yeah mm. and may i say i love the phrase as a firm or the firm because it kind of suggests a, a very close bond between everyone here and i, I kind of have two questions um with this first off when someone does uh pay for the firm services is it a specific person put to that case or is the whole firm working around the clock to try solve it we all work together on cases. Um, some usually one person takes the lead, and then everyone follows. Um, they, so it, they're like the primary contact for the person. For example, so if Desmond and I were hired on um, by by say for, for example you, if you hired us. Uh, we would be the primary contacts so people would answer to us for the case but as a whole yes we all work together um normally mm. and does that um often like cause maybe tension because you said there's very long work hours there's a it's a very straining job would that ever come mm-hmm. into play with colleagues would you ever get like snappy at each other or what's the usual deal there i think oh, the yeah, only yeah, people we we're all human yeah, I would say we get snappy. We're all human, mm-hmm. you know. It, it is how it is on a long stake. You know, we we, we make time though to uh, like if we're doing something that requires long periods of, of observation and mm-hmm. it's been four and a half hours and nothing's happened. You know, we we make time to go and rotate people out, get yeah. some stress relief, things like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, we all work really well together. Like. It's very rare that we actually end up snappy with each other. I think the yeah, only people I mean, that ever really snap at each other are Lenore and Tommy, but that's because they're like siblings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I mean it's God, I I really don't even want to talk about the cliche. Like it, it, we don't really consider each other like we don't say like family or anything like that. Like we understand so it's, it's a professional environment. We treat each other professionally, things like that. You know, professional respect and things like that. But we do. We all acknowledge and care for each other's personal well-being as well. No one's going to push each other to stretch themselves out to the point of becoming inoperable to the rest of the firm. Mm -hmm. And so if we see somebody doing that to themselves, we intervene and we say, hey, listen, you're going too hard on this. Take a break. Mm -hmm. Give me the paperwork. I'll look this over. Let me review the files. You go take a nap or something. Yeah. We we all try to help each other keep our sanities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, 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 not to, not to downplay the yeah. like the stressor cards that we said before. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's pretty. It, it can get pretty stressful sometimes. But yeah. yeah. And earlier on, you said that uh, this firm it looks for talent, and throughout you've mm-hmm. kind of mentioned things as such as using disguises and and stakeouts and so forth. So I'm just kind of wondering, what are kind of the talents that you look for? Is something like discretion something that you look for in an employee, someone who's good at solving problems, like say a Sherlock Holmes? Who who would you kind of look for in the talent wise? Well, I tell you what, if someone came to an interview in a Sherlock Holmes costume, I I would probably definitely not consider them as highly as I would another candidate. But we're, we're not <laughs> looking for people who are going to be. Uh, we're not looking for people who are going to be shouting out from the rooftops what they're doing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like obviously yeah. there's discretion involved in, in, in this kind of work specifically. You know, like <clears throat> our, our primary concern in, in almost all aspects is the discretion of our work and discretion of the information we collect to our customers. Mm-hmm. You know, it, uh, when we when we talk to our clients, when we set up a deal with our clients, that information goes to them and them alone or anybody that they bring with them and approve to hear this information, and that's it. Mm, yeah. 
and, th and that information is protected uh, by uh, legal documentation unless, you know, like something happens and we're forced by, you know, like legal threat news to, to disclose information, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, lastly, just uh, I don't want to keep you uh, for too long, but uh, more a question for the readers more than anything. What is your uh, particular process for hiring a candidate? Uh, that's an interesting one. Um, here, would you mind uh, letting uh, Doogie know that we're yeah. far up and at him, Crystal? Uh, I'll feel this one. Um, oh, hi. Um, Good morning. So, right now? Sorry, we, we use a, oh. uh, a, a we use a an interconnected system to communicate with each other, make sure that everyone's uh, on the same page. Uh, we're doing a, an interview for a newspaper, Doogie. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> an, an interview for a newspaper, Doogie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Take the headphones off, Doogie. <laughs> uh. Doogie's uh, one of our new, our new investigator hires. Mm -hmm. um, uh. If you had any follow-up questions, he'd, he'd probably be a good uh, person to speak with as well. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, would you rem remind me of the question? I <laughs> I lost track. Yeah, just one for our readers. Uh, how would you go about uh, the process for hiring a candidate? Oh, yeah. Um, well, sometimes we will... Uh, We'll put out feelers every once in a while, maybe a little bit more on the subtler side. We'll get in touch with people uh, that we could be pe people of interest, stuff like that. Or we'll hold open interviews. You know, we'll put out an advertisement where mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, it's like, hey, uh, from this time to this time, show up, professional uh, professional or business casual dress, uh, be prepared for these kinds of questions, that kind of thing. Mm. And, is and that, uh, the, the normally only... what we do is it's... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, the the only criteria. Um, I I mean, it's it's a mixed bag of what we look for. You know, it, there's different things people can do to benefit the company as a whole. So mm -hmm. we we look um, for diverse skill sets. We we don't want somebody who. I, 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 I let me rephrase that. I don't want to say we don't want somebody, but we want we. we prefer to involve people who will we know will take an active role in the firm. We don't want somebody mm -hmm. who will God there I go saying it again. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's hard to hire somebody who you know prefers paperwork or more idle an idle lifestyle that kind of mm -hmm. thing. You know, we want people who are actively doing things for the firm. Yeah. When I was hired on, um Lenore, uh, she's one of the owners. Uh, she had told me they wanted somebody personable somebody discreet and somebody who will actually work hard that's uh that's pretty much the three criteria she gave me during my interview mm, yeah um so that's like three of the big things that we here look for in people um so you gotta be able to talk to people gotta be able to be discreet about what you're doing and like desmond said you gotta you gotta want to do all the aspects of it not just one aspect yeah, yeah. 